Braves and the Volunteers kick off just moments away. Before we do, we welcome in the newest member of our team and uh, the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers moments ago, Jamie Rodal with Jeremy Pruitt. It was 10 years ago you were a coordinator at the high school level. Today you lead an SEC team onto the field as a head coach. What does it feel like? Well, I'm excited for these kids. I can't wait to see them play today. As your first decision, big decision as a head coach, you go with Jared Garantano under center. Why? Well, I think he gives us the best chance to win today. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. And, Jamie, we didn't give you a good enough introduction. You know, right. we had to hustle down for the interview. <laughs> Welcome to our team, partner. Thank you. I don't know if you guys saw me. I snuck into the run out just to make sure I could really experience <laughs> this college football atmosphere. My goodness, unbelievable. You're going to love the SEC. Thank Welcome. you. You know, I think she was most nervous, Brad, about the bus shot, just making sure her picture was great. That's you know, true. I mean, it's like 20 feet high. It's you know? sticky in Charlotte. <laughs> 89. Tennessee won the toss. They want the football. Evan Staley has it teed up. Ty Chandler and Marquez Callaway wait on the other end. Been waiting for this since the Sun Bowl, partner. Yes, sir. Let's go. <laughs> Great matchup. Really looking forward to this football game. At the goal line. And he called a fair catch, yeah, I think, they, right at the, the goal new, line. The new rule. The new rule. He'll bring it out to the 25. So if he would have caught it on the one, it still would have come out to the 25. Exactly. Not taking any chances. New rule instituted for safety purposes. If you fair catch the ball and catch it on anywhere inside the 25, you get the ball in the 25-yard line and either hash you want. Let's take a look at the Chick-fil-A starting lineup. And that starts with Jared Garantano, as Jamie talked about. There's his numbers from a year ago. He took some serious licks during that losing streak at the end of the year, but he hung in there, and he gets his shot under center to start things today. And hit immediately. Talk about getting hit. He's leveled by Kenny Bigelow. Well, if you're going to make a transfer impression, you might as well do it on the first play of the game. There's Bigelow, a busting assignment right away. You see Kennedy went the wrong way. The center seems to be going left. Bigelow goes to his left, and that is a, boy, if you're a nose tackle, and Bigelow played at USC and did not play much. Struggled with knee surgeries, played there, transfer, and his first snap, he makes a huge play. A loss of 10. Second down at 20, Garantano in the shotgun. Has time trying to throw a slant and it's broken up by Hakeem Bailey intended for Marquez Calloway. Here's the rest of the offensive lineup for Tennessee. Probably their best overall player, to be honest with you, is their left tackle, Trey Smith, a freshman All-American a year ago. Marquez Calloway, one of their top receivers. That was the guy that the pass was intended for on first down, and now it brings up third down and 20. Not exactly the spot you wanted to be yeah. in on the first series. So interesting, talking to Tyson Helton, the new offensive coordinator for Tennessee, he said, we just want to stay in sync with the chains, not fall behind third and longs. Here and comes the blitz, gets. and on third and long, that's what the Mountaineers do is bring the heat. They brought everybody. And David Long brings up a fourth down. Yeah, I think this was an easy call for the West Virginia defense. They did not believe that Tennessee would throw the ball downfield on this. They're just going to bring the house and dare that they, this was really a run blitz for them. They were saying, we don't think we're going to throw it downfield. We're coming out and we're going to stuff you again. And it puts Joe Doyle in a precarious spot here. Redshirt freshman punter standing in his own end zone. Marcus Sims waits on the other end back around the Mountaineer 45 yard line. And he comes running up on it at the 46. And immediately down there, but you talk about great field position for Will Greer and company. So we'll see the preseason All-American taking the field as we check our Chick-fil-A starting lineups for the Mountaineers. And it all starts with number seven. Great season a year ago. Those numbers did not include most of the Texas game, the Oklahoma game, and the bowl loss. So they lost three games at the end of the season when he had a broken finger. But when he was in there, they were pretty good. Martel Petaway with 
Greer in the backfield at the 48 yard line of Tennessee quick throw quick completion almost a quick first down Gary Jennings with the catch and as Gary Danielson already told you he had a bunch of those last year like 97 but of course the other big play guy those three wide receivers and now they've got a tight end they really like and Trevon Wesco yeah Wesco's right here in that H back position they're going to follow their running back that way and he's not going to get there nice job by Tennessee's defense. Yeah, I think you're going to get a holding on this ten, uh, West Virginia team. Might be on Yadni Kajus. It is. Left tackle. Holding. Number 55. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, that'll help out the Tennessee defense considerably as we look at their defensive lineup. Not a bad group to start, just not a lot of depth. Yeah, and we. We've Got seen Kirkland. a lot of these guys, but they're not, as you say, they want to go. And Kirkland's the main one that we haven't seen because of injuries right. he struggled with. Good to have him back. So that's first down and 20. And they're right back where they started from after fielding the punt at the 48 yard line. You look behind Will Greer. Throw down the middle on the run. It's his main man, David Sills. First down, Mountaineers. And a pickup of about 25. Well, this is about as open as you can get. You know this is a passing team. You drop back in a zone coverage. They do not match up man to man. And just watch how open and, you know, the level of throwing that Will Greer is going to bring to this college football game. You give him one like that, he's going, wow. I can't believe it. That the challenge for Tennessee is because they're so young in the secondary, they will play three true freshmen in the corner and safety spot. Is will they have the guts to line up and go man to man? 27 and start on my signal. Just resetting the clock to put about six more seconds back on. So the opening drive for West Virginia has carried them. To the 23 yard line of Tennessee. They'll keep it on the ground this time. And a good run for Penaway. Almost broke away down to the 11 yard line. So this was a bit of a look of a play as if it's a zone read. I don't think the quarterback's going to be keeping many of these. <laughs> I think I'd be going for the ball carrier on that. <laughs> And again, the officials are going to have a little conference. Well, West Virginia substituted, so Tennessee is allowed to substitute. And I don't think the officials. Please start the clock on my signal. Tennessee substitutes on the play, so now, excuse me, West Virginia substitutes on the play, so now Tennessee has the right to bring in a guy comfortably on the field. From the 11 yard line. You saw the red zone numbers for the Mountaineers a year ago. A little end around. Not being able to get to the corner, though. Tevin Bush, they stretched it out, knocked him out of bounds. Short gain. They can get a first down, the Mountaineers, near the two yard line. Ada Holgerson in his eighth year as the head coach of the Mountaineers. Doesn't seem like it's been that long. No, it doesn't. And it's the second full year that he's turned the play calling over to someone else. Jake Spavital is his guy, and uh, he has full trust in him. From the nine, Will Greer loads, fires, end zone, Sims dropped it. It was into triple coverage, but he had his hands on it. He doesn't let many of those get by him. No, that's for sure. You skipped 18 touchdown passes. 12 of them were in the red zone a year ago, and this time, and the flat that time, Haskins number 84 was wide open. I don't think Tennessee, it didn't look right. Did they only have 10 men on the field last play? It was still a perfect pass. Yes. Sims is, are you kidding me? It didn't look, it didn't look balanced last play. I, I wonder if they only had 10 guys out there. Third down at eight. Greer, plenty of time again. Moves to his left, now he's in trouble. He's just going to have to air it to the corner, a prayer there, and almost caught. 
by Giovanni Haskins, the tight end. But it brings up fourth down, so Tennessee holds. They did. They held a little bit with 10 men on the field. They got by, I think. And then they've held because of a drop pass. And then at the end right here, a contested ball. And Buchanan does a nice job of getting that ball to the ground. So they'll bring out Evan Staley, who we saw kick off. Last year, he was six out of seven. You see his longest was 36. This will be a 26 yard field goal attempt. And up and in. So West Virginia was threatening. Looked like they were going to get a touchdown from their quarterback to their number one receiver. They have to settle for three here early. Here. Four minutes in. Mountaineers go 38 yards in seven plays and had to settle for Evan Staley's 26 yard well, field goal. I think with this start for Tennessee, the, you know, the disaster almost on first down, that right. could have been a fumble, a drop pass almost for, a, you know, I don't know if it was lodged out of there or not, but that could have been a touchdown. And I think we went back and uh, are going to show everybody here after this kickoff, assuming it's not a touchdown, <laughs> that there were only 10 men on the field for Tennessee. Well, the balls went backwards on drive number one. They yes. hope to do better than that here. Same two guys back as kick returners Marquez Callaway and Ty Chandler. Last time they called fair catch. This time they're going to bring it from the one Chandler. And maybe you should have called fair catch. <laughs> That's going to be a second guessing all year. Isn't yeah, it? I know. Well, let's go back. It was the second down play here past the seals they do have four defensive linemen in the game okay but watch what happens Daryl Talley number 18 19 goes off the field so they go with the dreaded 4-2-4 defense <laughs> for Tennessee Askins number 84 is going to be wide open in the flat and you can almost figure it because they've only got 10 men on the field so they had two chances to score and Tennessee obviously dodges a big one right there Tim Jordan in a tailback for the first time out for Tennessee and he'll get the call and he's going down and it's Bigelow again. How about this kid? You talked about it. The transfer from USC didn't have a chance to play a lot. I mean, Only played 19 games over like four years yeah. at USC. He's playing like crazy here in the well, first he's quarter. A, you know, a five-star recruit. And right now, everybody who rated him a five-star five years ago is saying, see, I told you. <laughs> And there's the defense. David Long, the leader out there, along with Dylan Tonkery, the two linebackers on the inside. But Bigelow's been the big star here in the first quarter. Broken tackle this time. Nice run by Jordan. Got it out to the 20. It'll bring up third down and a long eight. Well, for this West Virginia team, a defense last year that just couldn't stop anyone on the ground the whole offseason there were about three things that they really concentrated on number one was let's play as a team number two is get bigger up front and they've accomplished that and you can see that already in the start of the game we'll unfold number three as the game goes around West Virginia fans know what number three is I can guarantee you that Tennessee was 119th in the country on third down conversions last year that's not good third and eight here Garantano loads fires got his man first down and it's Josh Palmer. Nice throw by Garantano. They'll move the chains. Sure was. I was out at practice for Tennessee on Thursday, and I got to tell you, Brad, I mean, the ball didn't hit the ground. Now, you know, they're going against themselves, but I've, you know, I've watched a lot of Tennessee practices over the last few years. I had to be impressed. They were disciplined. They might not be the most talented team, but they know what they're doing. I can tell you that. Quick throw in the flat. Brandon Johnson complete. Short gain on that one after they picked up 16 on that previous third down play. Huddle, 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 huddle. This time they're going to huddle. They went hurry up the last time, or at least hurry up to the line. Let's get a shot of that huddle. A lot of people don't know what that looks like. <laughs> See, this is where everybody gets together, yep. and then you actually call a play. <laughs> Something new in college football. Juwan Jennings checks into the lineup. They're happy to have him back. Every 6.3 dropbacks. We saw him get hammered on the first snap of the game earlier here in the gun on second and nine. And the handoff inside. Only about a yard for Jordan. 
And again, Gary talked about the defensive front of West Virginia couldn't stop anybody. They gave up over 200 yards a game rushing last year. Well, watch Bigelow again. He's just on the nose, pushing havoc on this offensive line for Tennessee. Even though he's getting blocked, it's in the backfield. There's penetration, and it's blowing up these running plays before they get started. They're going to give Kenny a quick breather as Jeffrey Pooler comes in to take his spot on the front on a third down and seven for Tennessee. Chandler flushes out of the backfield. Garantano again throws same spot as the last time. First down. And it's John Jennings still on his feet. Jennings all the way to the 42 yard line of West Virginia. A well designed play with stacked wide receivers. Brad, we have not done Jawan Jennings together, but I can tell you all the games I've done, he is one of my favorite players in the SEC. Great toughness, great leadership. I mean, he's a legend at Tennessee for a number of reasons, but some big catches in the past. And again, stuffing the run with Stills, not they Stills. Another one of the additions on their defensive front. Stack receivers go out just way too easy. The third part of that defense that West Virginia fans know is can they find any corner that can cover anybody? Kind of important in Big 12 football. <laughs> yes, a little bit. They put it in the air a little bit. Yes. Big, Big 12. Juan Jennings played against Georgia Tech last year. Missed the last 11 games with that wrist injury. I'm sure he's pretty happy to be back out on the field. Second down, 13. Again, it's still defense. You know, just like Tennessee has been tired of hearing the fact that they've gone 0 and 8 in the SEC, this proud West Virginia defense is tired of hearing about last year's defense. They got a chance now to go up against supposedly a rough and tough SEC team that they've been reading about that's going to try to run it right at them. And so far, they're saying, uh uh, not going to do it. This is the second time now Tennessee's been behind the change. The thing that Gary said, Tyson Helton, their offensive coordinator, didn't want them to get into. Third down at 14. Yeah, they've already converted two third and longs in this drive. Can they do it again? Here comes the blitz. Here comes everybody. Garantano, get rid of it. He did just in time, overthrew everybody, and took a pretty big shot, and his helmet came flying off in the process. Well, if you talk about the people from Tennessee, what they love about Jared Garantano is his toughness. Brad talked about it, how many times he got hit. Funny how when you lose a lot of games, as a quarterback, you get hit. But he got up and did it again. This West Virginia defense is dialed in, wow. I got to say. They're coming from every angle. They look really impressive. If they could play this type of defense with that offense they've got, they're going to be dangerous in college football and in that Big 12. So that snuffs the Tennessee march as Garantano has his head almost taken off with his helmet. Here's the punt. Fair catch called for around the 16 yard line by Gary Jennings. 550 remaining in the first quarter. And West Virginia's much maligned defense. Reason to celebrate here in the first quarter. They look good. The four, only now he's in a different uni. And a first team preseason All American, number seven. On the give, inside, pet away. Yeah, you got about four out of that. Will Greer was a two time Gatorade National High School Player of the Year at Davidson Day School right here in Charlotte. Started off at Florida. And we each did some of his games early in that 6 0 start, suspended yep. for the performance enhancing substance, transferred to West Virginia, where Dana Holgerson said, I, I recruited him like crazy. And I just <laughs> told him, keep my phone number just right. in case. Kept recruiting him. And by the way, this game here, this game site was part of it. That's right. They, they saw that several yes. years ago that they'd be playing here. Said you can go home with us to play <laughs> to start your season as a fifth year senior. You know, Will could put together a bake. He's got that Baker Mayfield, you know, fifth year senior transfer throwing. Worked out okay for Baker. Not bad. Yeah. First down at the 28. Taking his time in the pistols, going to give it off to Pettaway again. Broke one tackle in the backfield, and he made something out of nothing again. Picks up about three. 
Well, when you're calling the defenses like Jeremy Pruitt is, he's going to call the defenses for Tennessee. He makes a good call here with the corner cat blitz. It's actually a run defense. It's an eight-man front, a little different way to do it this time, and he bottles up the run with a good call on first down. Rear play action. Quick slant, complete Sims has got it. And a first down for the Mountaineers out across the 40-yard line. David Sills, I beg your pardon. I might have said Marcus Sims. Yep. One of those delayed routes. He's going to go out to the sideline, let the defensive backs clear in the zone, and then come right underneath it. That's very simple. It's one of those get your stats throws. I always like those early in the game. You know, give me about six or seven of those. I want to be seven for nine and then throw the ball down the field. Mountaineers were in a mini huddle. The five linemen were up at the line of scrimmage. Everybody else having a little conversation with Will Greer. First down. Again, play fake, plenty of times. Throw is complete. TJ Simmons down the sideline. Did he get there? Yes, he did. Touchdown. Fifty nine yards to the end zone. Yeah, I think he got in there that time, no doubt about it. Look at the accuracy on this throw. The Alabama transfer TJ Simmons goes in for David Sills in that wide position. Sills moves over, and I think that confused this Tennessee defense. Extra point by Staley is good. So the Mountaineers with a big strike from Will Greer. Watch how accurate this throw is. When you throw him this well, your receiver has an opportunity to catch it and run. And that's what T.J. Simmons does on this play. Goes out wide open, zone, very soft play for the Tennessee secondary. Breaks one tackle, but the throw, I've seen it before. When you put him there, they keep running. Will Greer had 34 of these a year ago. He's got 2018 off to a good start. 24th on CBS. I can't wait to see the car, the flowered shirts, the Tigers cap. I, I like the, the, the English team. That's oh, right. Yeah, that's you know, a good hat. Cap is a good hat, right? Let's check in with Jamie. Gary, I've seen two very different approaches with quarterback Jared Garantano between those last two series. The first, he kind of sat on his own. Not many people came up to him. He put the headset on once. The second time, though, the wide receivers, the O line, rallied around him. Keep in mind what Tyson Helton told us. He wants the quarterback, whoever is playing, to feel comfortable within this offense. So we thought, and we see now, that they're just giving him room to get into this game. I think one of it, he got hit so hard. Remember, his coach, Tyson Helton, is up in the box at that time, yep. too. I mean, he's made the throws. They've all been to the right. Nothing to the left yet in the throwing game. What about Pedro? And again, trouble from the inside. This time's Reese Donahue at front of the Mountaineers is playing lights out right now. Yeah, they're, they're, boy, the Tennessee offensive line, they were so excited about how they have been coming on, but right now, they're just running through those tackles, blocks, no one really doing a good job, ran right through it, and, you know, if you can't get the ends to come around the corner and get them blocked, that time Chance Hole just couldn't hand it, handle it, and it was over. Garantano wants to throw a little screen and does. The blockers are in front, out across the 25, maybe to the 27 is Tim Jordan. What a nice play by Dylan Turn a Tunkery that time, the middle linebacker. He saw the, took his drop, saw the screen, played it off, and uh, did it just perfectly. Another third down. A long eight, almost nine. Trips to the top of the screen for Garantano. Just a three-man rush this time. A little stunt on the front. Garantano does have enough time. Long sideline throw, and he got it there. 
A flag is down. Brandon Johnson has the first down, depending on the penalty. Interesting call from that time from the West Virginia defense. They've been so effective with the blitz, but it's the third, third and long that they will have com uh, converted if there's not a penalty against them on this play. Gary Patterson is our referee today. I thought he had a game at TCU. Yeah, I don't know if they lined up properly. They might have an illegal formation. The right tackle might have been lined up in the backfield that time. Remember, Chance Hall had just been beat. Two fouls on the play, both on the offense. Legal formation, more than four players in the backfield. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, offense, number 84. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat third down. Right. Did everything wrong. Well, you know, you get beat for a sack, and you're an offensive tackle. You try to cheat back. Now think about that. Coming out, you got a bunch formation this time. Oh, uh, and he runs right. He tries to go. He's trying. He's on his stem, running forward. That's one of the tough ones for an offensive player. But when you extend your arms, that's when you're going to get called on that play. I think if he might have kept his arms in, he might have had a chance to get through with it. Good call by the officials. Homer just ran over Josh Norwood, and it forces a third down and 22 again. Long yardage on and third down. Tyson Helton coming from USC said, well, I didn't have three of these calls all year for right. USC. He said three in the first quarter. They don't have to blitz on this long a down, which they brought the house a couple of times on third down, but not on third and 22. And they stop the run and they force a punt. Well, one of the things that Jeremy Pruitt talked about this football game was I really would like to get this thing in the second half for the chance to win. Right. You better be careful. He, right now he's thinking, can I get it to the second quarter? <laughs> exactly. Joe Doyle in the punt again. Tennessee, one bright spot they did have last year was Trevor Daniel, who was one of the top punters in the country. Now they got a redshirt freshman out there. And again, he's kicking deep in his own territory. It's a high hanger that'll call for a fair catch around the 39 yard line for Marcus Sims. 114 remaining in the first quarter. As Gary said, all Mountaineers in quarter number one. All right, Zuck, thanks. Wow, good win for Ole Miss. That one had fireworks from uh, the opening kickoff almost. Here we've got a 10-0 Mountaineer lead. Will Greer with a touchdown pass of 59 yards. Evan Staley opened the scoring with a 26-yard field goal, and that's where we are as the Mountaineers take over again right now at the 39-yard line. Alex Sinkfield in the backfield with Will Greer this time. They think very highly of him and Letty Brown. They're two freshman tailbacks. Four wide out set for Greer. Sinkfield. He popped through but fell down, picked up about four. Well, neutral site game, and you know, Ness, I think it's pretty much 50 50. It kind of goes a dividing line right across like that. Both fan bases have one end zone for us to our left is the Tennessee end zone, and then they wrap around on the TV screen. Everybody we're looking at are West Virginia fans, but below us are all Vol fans. Five. Greer is going to loft one. He's got a man out there. Oh, got a hand on it, but couldn't hold it. In David Sills, a little bit too far to the outside. And he was matched up against a true freshman that time, Trayvon Flowers, really highly respected player. But wow, that was like a guy going right back up past that bus stop on that one. <laughs> Because this ball was slightly overthrown, he didn't have a chance to catch it, but uh, Flowers had no chance. He was anticipating a short route, and it wasn't. So third down and medium here for West Virginia. Got to get a stop. They got to get a stop. They have to get this back in this football game. Greer rolls right, wants to go back to his left, and has to throw it away. Well, he didn't throw it away. He threw it to... Tevin Bush, but not a first down. Good defense that time. Tennessee brings a five man rush, forces Greer out of the pocket, and gets a stop. 
five-man rush. They forced that secondary to play man-to-man -man coverage. They caught a break. Will Greer missed an easy touchdown pass on that one. He had Sills, and they survived. Can they get a drive and give this defense a little time on the bench to catch their breath? breath. This punt might have to wait till the second quarter. Let's see. Oh, just got the snap off. And they blocked the punt, got a piece of it. It's going to dribble its way all the way down around the 25. I think Alante Taylor got a hand on it. That's the one I saw. Another freshman, Alante Taylor, number six, is the guy who got it. Problem is, when you block a punt, you want it to go backwards. Yep, just not enough of it. You know, one of the things that Danny Holgerson talked to us about as his team tries to have that magical season is you got to have a few fortunate plays. Right. And that might have been one of them right there. That's the end of the first quarter. 10 nothing. Mountaineers out in front will return to Charlotte after this message in a word from your local station. Back to start the second quarter in Charlotte with West Virginia, the 17th ranked Mountaineers, leading 10 to nothing. And the first three possessions not so good for the Volunteers. They've got it back here. Garantano throws out in the flat. And a pickup of about seven for Chandler. We saw those first three possessions as we're welcoming you back inside the booth. And Gary, right now, Tennessee would love to have something end with a kick, not a punt, <laughs> an extra point or a field goal, something yeah. to get rolling here. Well, Brendan Kennedy, the center for Tennessee, struggling so far. He transferred from Alabama. He was supposed to be one of the guys that they were going to depend on in this game. But Bigelow is just eating him up, and that really is causing problems for the whole Tennessee offense. They can't get started because that pressure is coming right up the middle. And now I think we've got a guy down and Chandler on that last play picked up about seven he is up and that's going to put Tim Jordan on the spot a little bit you know it is funny when we talked to Jeremy about what did he talk with to Philip Fulmer when he interviewed for the Tennessee job and he said I talk ball I talk offensive line play so what really is popping up right here is offensive line play for Tennessee I mean you can have all the fancy formations and receivers but if you can't block the guy right over the center it ain't going to work of course, when you talk about Philip Fulmer, a former offensive lineman and former championship winning coach for the Vols, who's now the athletic director. We saw him uh, briefly last night and a nice chat with the coach. So a pickup of five, which is good for Chandler. The bad news is he goes out. That puts the heat on Tim Jordan. And that means Madre London will probably see more action than he would have as well at the tailback spot for Tennessee. Second down of five. Garantano was under center, now comes into the shotgun with Jordan to his left. Eli Wolf, the tight end in motion, there's a little toss underhand. Sweet. It'll be short of the first down for Jordan. Well, Kenny Bigelow again just got into the backfield. Remember again, we just talked about it in the, in the on camera, how this game started right here. And in Kennedy, number 55, either busts his assignment or can't get him blocked. And the middle of the West Virginia defensive line, part of the football team that was, you know, in such upheaval a year ago, seems to start out the season as a strength. And now Trey Smith is out. We talked about him, the left tackle for the Volunteers, and they swap, swap their offensive tackles, Niehaus and Richmond. So trouble along the line and their best guys not in there. Tough run. I think he got the first down though. Tim Jordan. You know when you're a, a defensive lineman the reason Aaron Donald got so much money for the Rams is he penetrates and then opens it up for these linebackers to make the plays. Look at that. You just move that offensive line back and now the next guy goes holy cow this is like tackling practice <laughs> right here. I recreate a line of scrimmage and then I just clean it up when I have to. That time was Benton. Charlie Benton, who was the first guy to make the tackle, but he's the last guy to leave the turf holding his left leg. They look at him, we'll check him when we come back. You take a look at Charlie Benton, the sophomore out of Opelika, Alabama. And either his left knee or ankle both didn't look good. 
at the end of that last play. He actually made the initial contact coming off the left side on the outside linebacker position. Meanwhile, Tennessee's got issues too, Jamie. Yeah, tough series for the Volunteers. Trey Smith is getting his right ankle taped up right now. They were also looking at the right knee. As far as inside the medical tent, you have tailback Ty Chandler. My best guess is it's an ankle of sorts. He went limping in there. I'll let you know when I find out. Hey, we don't like seeing those things up, that's for sure. And for Trey Smith, you know, just got back to being game shape worthy. He had blood clots in his lungs over the summer, and uh, it took him a while just to get back in playing shape and now they're lacing up his ankle hoping he can come back in and play that left tackle spot for the volunteers. It was Meanwhile, a it was a first down by yeah. that much. It was a close spot where it was reviewed and it was too close to overturn. Garantano play action. Wants a big one. Going long. Man out there is Palmer, but he's out of bounds. Well, Josh Norwood, number four, the transfer from Ohio State, went to junior college, came out there. He did not bite on the hitch and go that time. Perfect position, forced the receiver to the sideline. He can't do it any better than that. The corner position needs to be upgraded, and one of them that might be able to do it is Josh Norwood, number four. So brings up second down at 10. The pitch to Tim Jordan trying to get to the edge. Nice cut. Did. Yep. Almost got a first down. Nice run. Really was. He ran it hard to the outside, planted that right foot, and took it 90 degrees upfield. Probably the best blocked play so far in this football game for Tennessee. And Eli Wolf, number 80, the tight end, had a really key block on the edge that time. Third and inches? Yep. Third and less than one. Extra tight end in for the balls and eye backfield. Jordan, the second man through, going to try to cut it outside. And he got there. Picks up the first down. And we talked about a new era for Tennessee wearing old fashioned uniforms. This guy's trying to bring back Tennessee old fashioned football. High school coach at Hoover, Alabama. His dad's still a high school coach. Florida State's defensive coordinator, Georgia's defensive coordinator, Alabama's defensive coordinator, won national championships at two of those places and almost a third. And now here he is, his coaching, head coaching debut. He says, I don't care. I could still be doing it when I was doing 10 years ago. I'd be happy. I just like coaching ball. I think he's making a little more money now than he was at Hoover, yeah. Alabama. He does. Really nice little play here. Jared Gertano is on mark with his throws. A nice little drive. Let's test your knowledge with today's athletic trivia question. Which former Tennessee head coach won the most games in his first full season? Ball fans would like to hope that that guy would answer that question like <laughs> next year. Next year. That'd be but good. we got to go back a little ways. Trey Smith back in the lineup. As Jamie told us, retaped and play in that left tackle spot where he was a freshman All-American last year. Keep an eye on Dominic Wood Anderson. He's a special player of the tight end. Here's a throw and catch and trying to get to the first down is Marquez Calloway. He got most of it in front of Hakeem Bailey. Well, Tennessee started out throwing the ball to the right, but now they've tuned it over to the left side. They've got a matchup they like. Callaway against Hakeem Bailey, number 24, and has two successful throws in a row. They're moving the sticks. Second and short is good for the Volunteers. Madre Landon in there first time, and he's got a first down. The Michigan State transfer picks up the first down for Tennessee. 14 new players are Jeremy Pruitt, guys. He's bringing in, in this game, whether they're true freshmen or transfers in this game. 14 new guys will play in this game that did not play a year ago or wasn't even on this team a year ago. This drive, Gary, they've stayed ahead of the chains and they're moving it pretty good right now. Yep. Now got it to the 33-yard line. I got to believe we're going to start seeing the blitz now. Garantano play fake. Fires left side, completes it. Yep. And it's Marquez Callaway again. You know, we saw Jared Garantano play as a freshman. You know, he kind of wide-eyed, but I was impressed with him. He started out, he had that incident on the bench when, uh, you know, a lot of people saw him acting maybe the wrong way. But he saved the season. I loved his toughness. He became a competitor. I think he won his team over, and uh, I think he's got a bright future. 
Great size, highly recruited player, and now he's in an offense. I think that's a little more comfortable for him. He's more comfortable on this drive for sure. With the 10-minute mark of the half, here's the toss. London trying to break tackles, and he got back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. It'll bring up third down and a big third down and five upcoming for Tennessee. Well, what would defensive coordinator Gibson do right now? I think he's got to bring the heat. Remember, he rushed three guys before he got there. And I think in this situation, he wants, number one, Tennessee's in field goal range. I think he's going to come after. Johnson, Palmer, and Callaway all to the left side. Garantano takes his time as he looks to the sideline. And here's the biggest third down so far for Tennessee. They only bring three again. Garantano throws complete to Palmer. And a first down. I don't get it. I don't know. You got a hot quarterback. You got a struggling offensive line. You got a weak secondary that can't cover. And so you're only going to bring three guys? I, I just don't get it. I'm going after the quarterback here. I'm not going to let him have a receiver matched up against the linebacker. And the ball's up to the line in a hurry after a pickup of 15 at the 14. Trying to put points on the board for the first time this afternoon. Five first downs in this drive. Jordan up the middle. Jordan heading to the end zone. Down to the one yard line. Toyas Avery finally got him down, but it's first and goal. Does it count as a uh, going through a missed tackle of Terrence Ramsey? The umpire didn't make a tackle on <laughs> that play. Let's take a look at our Chick fil A pylon cam. Right there, you see he's inside the one. Tennessee team has got a first and goal at the one yard line when we return to Charlotte. Uptown Charlotte where the volunteers have their 14th play of the drive coming up. Gary let's go back to the last one. Well, we've been talking about Brandon Kennedy struggling a little bit on center right here but watch on this play he gets a good key block. We show him when he doesn't get one this time he seals off the middle linebacker that makes the play and since the umpire did not make the tackle on this play. Look at Terrence Ramsey, the umpire. Is that a missed tackle or a broken tackle? <laughs> right down to the one. What a nice drive here. 13 plays, 77 yards. Six first downs in the drive. They started at their own 22 yard line. And now they've got it at the one. An extra offensive lineman, and everybody's stacked in tight. First and goal. Tim Jordan, the tailback. And he is stuffed. Loss of about three. Shea Campbell and Jeffrey Pooler, the two guys that met him first. Well, you know this was the challenge right here. We're the bigger, supposedly stronger team. You bounce it outside. That means the defensive lineman got the leverage inside, bounce it outside, and there's no one there. Askew Henry's right there, makes the tackle, and uh, boy, a loss of yardage. Loss of two. This is the passing down. What do you do if you're turning? Yeah. If your offensive quarter Tyson Helton right here, do you throw the ball? You don't wait for play action on third down, do you? You toss sweep it to Jordan, and he's going to get dropped again at the line of scrimmage. See, that's the tough one. You've talked all fall camp how we're going to come back to fundamental tough football. We're going to out-muscle people. We're not going to finesse people. But down here, it gets tough. you got to block 11 guys. And on second down, that's when as an offensive coordinator, you like to dial up that play action pass. They go run, run, they go lose, lose. And they go third and goal. Is this two down territory already for the volunteers? I, I put points on the board unless it gets really close. Just thought I'd ask. Garantano, this time in the gun. Marquez Calloway in motion. Garantano rolls that way. Now he's going to tuck in, and he's knocked down at the two. Kenny Robinson and David Long are there. Great call by West Virginia. They went zone on this play. They were trying to run the rub, the Clemson rub. But look at the zone. 
standing right out there where they tried to throw the ball. A great call by West Virginia. The reason I asked you is do you go for three or is it four down territory? I know. Right now, I know. they're going to call a timeout to think about it. I, I'm telling you, I would not want a loss here. i got to put points on the board. We'll find out if it's a field goal or a fourth down try when we come back. Six seventeen remaining in the half. Gary Tennessee has had it for 16 plays, almost nine minutes. They haven't scored since November 25th of 2017. <laughs> what do they do here? Well, you know I'd make a 10-3, okay? But this is the first big decision that Jeremy Pruitt's going to make, and he's going to go for it. They've had the ball the whole quarter here. They converted three fourth downs all of last year. This one would be huge. That's why he's getting paid the big bucks, right? That's why he's not coaching in Hoover, Alabama anymore. Listen. Fourth and goal. Garantano, play fake, end zone, touchdown, Tennessee. Dominic Wood Anderson. Busted coverage by West Virginia. Jeremy Pruitt is right, and Gary Danielson is wrong. Two defenders, Dylan Tonkery and Toysis, Toyus Avery, number 10 and number three, both go for the fullback, leaving the tight end wide open. Play, play 101, Brad, that you put in in goal line. Brent Samaglio with the extra point. The rookie head coach takes a chance, and it pays off. Tight end's going to go here. Fullback's going to go to the flat. Watch both players for West Virginia go for the fullback. Jared Garantano says, all those hits I took in the first quarter, now I got one my, of my own. 10-7. All right, Adam, see you guys in about six minutes, 13 seconds. A 78-yard march in 17 plays for Tennessee. They go for it on fourth down. As you look at our aero coverage sponsored by State Farm here to help life go right things went right for Garantano and his tight end on that one yard touchdown and now we got a ball game. We do. It was the first big decision for Jeremy Pruitt. The first touchdown in the Jeremy Pruitt area and the first rendition of Rocky Top all in the same play. <laughs> Paxton Brooks will kick off for Tennessee. Marcus Sims is the lone return man for the Mountaineers. And this one won't have a chance. And they bring it out to the 25. Tennessee's longest drive last year was 15 plays, so that's the longest one they've had in two years. Let's give you our Aflac trivia question. Which former Tennessee head coach won the most games in his first full season? We had fun with this one guessing the other day. Yes. And back in 70, Bill Battle went 11 and 1. Jeremy Pruitt just three points behind the 17th ranked Mountaineers of West Virginia right now with a half and six minutes 13 seconds to go. Well, West Virginia's left uh, a couple touchdowns on the field and Tennessee climbed back into football game. Two men in the backfield but Petaway gets the handoff. Got about three. Tennessee closed the door on him there. Ramon Flowers true freshman back in that secondary. A lot of youth in that secondary against Gary mentioned it earlier. And it's something you think Will Greer would be licking his chops over. Yeah, uh, it's one of those things when you have this type of elite quarterback, every time you run the ball and it doesn't go for big yardage, you're going, man, I, I guess I should have thrown that one. <laughs> Tough to call plays and keep balance when you got a quarterback like this. Everybody but the center. Yeah. Matt Jones just yeah, going to hold on to it. Full start. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, second down. Matt Jones was still pointing out the Mike linebacker he was. when Will Greer was asking for the ball. Watch Jones. He's still pointing out here like, ah, that's who I want you guys <laughs> to block. And uh, Will's calling for the ball. Everybody did a two-step except Matt Jones. Yes. So that backs it up to second down at 11. 
Sinkfield in the backfield with Greer. The center judge finally backs out. We're ready for play. Pressure coming. Greer's going to loft a sideline shot. Missed him again. It, it was Sinkfield. Had a step. Yeah, missed him again. That's uh, two potential touchdowns. He's saying that one's on me. Yeah, I got a linebacker matched up on a running back, and you got a touchdown if you make that throw. Remember, he had Sills early, and now he's got the perfect matchup here. And does not put it on Mark. That's going to go all the way to the house if that's put on the Mark. And he knows it. And now the volunteer fans coming to life here in Charlotte because it's third down and long. Mountaineers weren't good on third down last year. 111th in the country because of being in situations like this. Third and double figures. Greer, pressure coming. Given chase, trying to find a guy and throws uh -oh, incomplete. Uh -oh. Right at the end of that play. Sills wants an interference, but no flags. Alante Taylor, the true freshman number six, was very close to getting called interference on the play. Greer lets it go. Nice job. Don't make a big hit. Don't make a silly play. Taylor does not. And it brings up a putting situation for West Virginia. Billy Kinney into kick. Average about 41 a kick a year ago. Marquez Callaway chases it down around the 24. To the big hit at the 28. And that is where they'll go to work. And now we're going to do Project Smarter presented by Home Depot. And you know, Ness, everybody talks about what are the attributes for a quarterback you have to have. You can have all the pretty stuff you want. Good feet, good arm, but if you don't have the toughness to stand in there and take those hits, you don't get the opportunity to throw the ball down the field. He took the hits, he's come back, and he has the opportunity to make the throws. The most underrated part of any quarterback, the tool you have to have, is toughness. He talked about 26 sacks he took a year ago, and that doesn't even count all the hits he took after getting rid of the football. Here he is coming up fire to Callaway on the outside, and Marquez gets it out to the 36 as we check in with Jamie. We're not going to see two players for the rest of the game, one for each side. I'll start with the tailback, Ty Chandler for Tennessee. He is out. I cannot confirm what the injury is, but we will not see him again. Defensively for West Virginia, Charlie Benton was carted off. He has a left knee sprain. He is also done. All right, Jamie, thanks. That takes a, a big chunk out of the lineup for Tennessee. Chandler not only got over 300 yards on the ground, but he was a good kick returner last year. Here's the guy that's the other one, Tim Jordan. Down the sideline. Oh, boy, you love that. Hey, ball fans, you got to love this. That's the physical play that has been dialed up and what all the Tennessee fans are waiting for. When are we going to be physical again? This time, great blocking up front, and your running back gets physical with the football. Just toss that guy away. Got it into Mountaineer territory. And now Tennessee's taken over. How this game is swinging right now, even though they trail by three. Garantano under center. Here comes a end around to Palmer. And Palmer's got some room to work. Goes for about eight more before David Long can bring him down. Nice job of mixing it up by Tyson Helton That's right exactly now. Exactly what it is right now. Those plays that were being made in the middle of that defensive line now, Tyson Helton, the offensive coordinator, is keeping them off balance with a lot of different attacking angles. And else might be keeping them off balance. You know, it's a hot day, and you just win a 17 play drive, and now yeah. you go three and out, and you're back out there. Second down and three at the 40 yard line. Andre London this time. And he's going to get dropped for a loss. Ezekiel Rose drops him for a two-yard loss, maybe more. If you look at the stats with the two quarterbacks right now, it's the misses by Will Greer that has been standing out to me. He had two touchdowns he's left on the board, and Jared Garitano has been so comfortable. You know, they have a 
uh, transfer, fifth year transfer, Kellen Christ, that's sitting behind him, but no plan to use him if Garantano keeps playing the way he is. All three wideouts to Garantano's left. The whole team has a look to the sideline on third down at four. They're going to run it and they're going to lose yardage again. So they wasted an opportunity with a couple of runs there. London lost yardage both times. David Long submarined in there to make the stop. Yeah, David Long is the key guy for this defense as a tackling machine. A year ago, he was injured the first four games. The West Virginia defense did not get off on the right foot, and uh, it never got better, even when he got healthy. Somewhat of an odd call there, I thought. I don't know if Helton was predicting a blitz or something, but he tried to pop it, and it didn't work. He had a hot quarterback, and he didn't go with it. So they'll have to punt it. Doyle's kick, fair catch taken at the 10 by Gary Jennings. So we're a minute 52 away from halftime. And that will bring us the Geico Halftime Report. Adam, Rick, PJ will be along with all scores and highlights from earlier. A look ahead to what's yet to come. Got a flag on that play. Not sure what for. It looked like a fairly routine punt, but here's the call. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 81, Tennessee. 15 yards from the end of the kick. The first down for West Virginia. On Austin. Number 81's first unsportsmanlike. Austin Pope, the tight end on the punt team. Yeah, it looked like a retaliatory play by Pope. He was getting shoved in the face, and he just rakes the player in front of him. And, of course, the second guy gets caught on the play. Austin Pope, a Knoxville native who played at Christian Academy in Knoxville. He, I think he just shoves him away, and, of course, that's what gets seen. I think it's right here in the bottom of the screen that happened. Pushes up, gets shoved, and then he pushes him back, knocks his helmet off. Greer rolls, throws on the run, completes it up to Sills. Wide open, and so was Greer who rolled out, and there was nobody there to put a hand in his face. Two straight three and outs for this West Virginia offense. They're going to go fast. Now watch Sills anticipate the defender, slow down to avoid the big hit. Very smart play by the receiver. Got it to the 43-yard line. West Virginia trying to get some points here before intermission. Back to the ground they go. Pretty good run by Lady Brown, a true freshman out of Philadelphia. They like this kid. Think he's going to be special someday. I do. Biggest recruit of last year's class, a four-star recruit. When he's in there, he'll probably carry the ball. He's not up on the pass protection and scheme. All sides. Defense, number 28. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. This is an ACC crew. Gary Patterson is our referee. Penalty was on. Dalen Buchanan. Hey, they'll take it. Yep. Be first and five instead of second and what, three or four, was it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Good opportunity to go deep now. Everybody has a look at Will Greer on first and five. Quick throw to the outside, complete. It's to Marcus Sims, and he's got a first down and out of bounds. So they're back in Tennessee territory. Still a lot of time to work with. They did use one of their timeouts earlier. But a first down at the 44. And also remember, they get the ball to start the second half. A very important drive for West Virginia. They could really create some space in this football game, getting back-to-back -back possessions. Four wideouts for Will Greer, two to each side. He's going down the middle with it, and it's complete again. Gary Jennings. Jennings to the 30. I'll tell you, this is going to be the thing for West Virginia all year. Every time they try to run the ball, establish balance, they're going to go, really? <laughs> I mean, why aren't we throwing it? I mean, we're so good at it. It'll be a challenge to stay balanced in close games. First down at the 30 at the 43-second mark. 
Greer waits till the last moment, lofts it, and oh, what a nice play oh, at the last second, broken up. I think Trayvon was, Flowers, was, another one of those freshmen. A true freshman playing safety. There's three of them out there in their dime package. The ball's laid up, and look at the freshmen come across. They actually beat Clemson out for Flowers, one of the big recruits for this Tennessee class that Jeremy Pruitt put together. Trayvon out of Tucker, Georgia, a true freshman. Nice play. Second and ten. Greer looks right. Now draw play quickly to Brown, and Brown's got a first down. Letty Brown with an 11-yard run. The dime package comes in. Remember, we talked about it. Three freshmen. They're confused. Look at they're all telling each other what to do. And the ball gets snapped. Look at that space out there. Mountaineers going quickly at the 19. Greer backpedals in trouble. And he's going down. Tennessee finally got to him. Shy Tuttle, the nose tackle. We've got to take a timeout here. See that? That's one of the things that Will Greer Brad has to learn. You don't have to make every play a touchdown. Just drop the ball off this time. You got Laddie Brown, number four, standing right there. You don't need to make a big play every play. Next Saturday at 7.30 at CBS Sports Network, the SEC travels to the mountains, Arkansas. Going to clash with Colorado State on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Carter Blackburn, Aaron Taylor, John Strippen will be there to bring it to you. Here, the Big 12 of the SEC, West Virginia leading by three and trying to get more before halftime here. Second and 12, Will Greer waits. Now flushed out of the pocket. He's in trouble. Look at Will. Time is down under 10 seconds. And he runs down the sideline and almost runs out of time. I thought that was a peel back block against a defenseless player. I'm shocked that it wasn't called on the scramble that time. Kajust is going to come back at the end when Will Greer goes to his left. Now watch this blindside block right here. Boy, I thought that should be called. I, I, Jeremy Pruitt was irate. Oh. That's what that's kind of the main emphasis that we've been talking about here. Meanwhile, we're down to five seconds and so much for a touchdown drive. It'll be a field goal attempt by West Virginia to essentially end the half when we come back. This was an 11 yard scramble by Will Greer. But watch this block coming up that we think should have been a penalty. Yeah, it could have been helmet to helmet that time. It was definitely a peel back block. There's been a new emphasis. One of the rule changes is once that ball leaves, you know, that uh, tackle, tackle box. box right there. And I, and I, I, I think that this is reviewable whether not only number one where he went out of bounds, but whether it was a targeting hit on the play. And they got the whistle for play and it's. It's funny yeah, Evan Staley out to try a field goal. Funny I thought West Virginia had an opportunity Brad with 18 seconds to go. Remember you don't divide 18 by three by you know six seconds six seconds six seconds. You only need one second for the last play. I thought they had an opportunity to run three plays. They got one play. Well, and they scrambled for 11 yeah, seconds. Yeah. It looked like Fran Tarkin did. Again, there. Will Greer tried to do a little too much, but it's not there. Get rid of the ball. Live another play. Tennessee is taking its final time out here with five seconds left. I'm not sure you're icing the kicker when it's a 35-yard attempt, but the 36-yarder was the longest one Evan Staley made last year. Talked with Dana Hogerson yesterday. And said how far do you trust your kicker out he said well I trust him to 50 he just missed a 60 yarder in practice I'm not going to try a 60 yarder in the game but this one should be routine but we'll see and Jeremy put ran out under the field to point out the peel back block he's lucky he didn't get called exactly not supposed to leave that sideline so at any rate it looks like our final play of the half Evan Staley the sophomore out of Romney, West Virginia, to try to tack three more on for the Mountaineers. Kick is up. And he tucked it inside the left upright as the half comes to a close. Well, the goal for Jeremy Pruitt, as you look at Dana Holgerson leave the field with a 13-7 lead, was can I get it to the second half in a ball game? Goal accomplished. Certainly has. Trailing by six as he heads to his locker room before Dana Holgerson heads to his. He's with Jamie. Coach, 
we know Will Greer is playing in front of his hometown crowd. Did you see nerves from him at all, or are they taking something away defensively? No, nah, well, they're doing a good job defensively. You know, it, it's a it's a possession game right now. We've had the ball five times and installed out two of the five times, you know. So we just got to finish drives a little bit better than we did. Uh, I think he's fine. I ain't worried about the crowd. It's football when it gets right down to it. Uh, great crowd here, great game. It's kind of what we expected. All right, Coach, thanks. All right, thank you. Halftime in Charlotte and the Mountaineers of the Big 12 leading the Volunteers of the SEC 13 to 7 our halftime score as we head to New York and our studios with Zook, Rick and BJ. Fellas. All right, now you're going to go with the hot head and you may have a situation like Alabama had last year in the national title game. Right now, a 13-7 score, and we are set for Will Greer in West Virginia to face Tennessee in the debut of Jeremy Pruitt as head coach. The Mountaineers will be getting the ball to start the second half as we debut our season here with the SEC on CBS. Brad, Gary, and Jamie as action gets set to continue in Charlotte. Thanks, fellas. Great halftime. We saw some... Some uh, impressive highlights from around the country yeah. here in the first half. Obviously, I think it was 4:51, Gary, wasn't it, when uh, we stopped play, and that's about 13 minutes after six. That's a long time to be sitting there and waiting to resume play if you're these guys. Yeah, and I, I thought that the main criticism I have in this football game so far, yeah, Tennessee has come back. They're in the game. And I think Will Greer, if I was coaching him in this game, I'd say, you're trying to do too much. Yeah. Go through your progression, hit your guy, throw your check downs. Let's just go through our normal offense because Tennessee is feeling they can play with this West Virginia team now. Remember, Dana Hogerson told us yesterday, he said, I, I keep telling him it's okay to be average. Right. But he said he hates that word. I don't want to be average if you don't have to make every play. The biggest surprise of the game, I think, for a Tennessee fan is your quarterback has hung in there. Biggest yep. part of the game for Tennessee. Let's check in with Jamie. Wow, let me tell you guys, the juxtaposition of the two conversations I just had between a first-time head coach and a coach that in his eighth year was fascinating. Jeremy Pruitt, we'll start with him. He goes in and he coaches the entire time during the rain delay. He said we did a lot, not a lot of things great, and we did a couple things all right, especially that long drive. He wants to see that extended offensive drive again. Dana Holgerson, he said this happened to him eight years ago in his first game. It was a three-hour rain delay, and he said the one thing he learned, they didn't have anything to eat. So anything West Virginia, everything West Virginia did in that halftime revolved around eating food. They also watched the end of the Texas game. They checked in on the Auburn Washington game. Oh yeah, and they coached a little bit too. So there you go, you guys. One, you got a new head coach, and then you got an eight-year head coach. That is interesting. <laughs> hey, Jamie, I gotta say, right? Jamie and Gary, remember yesterday the last thing Dana said to us? He said, first game of the year in game and halftime adjustments is what's win the game for you. He's had plenty of time to talk well, about this and, one. And his halftime adjustment was my team's a little tight and I'm not going to make them tighter by talking about everything I want them to do the second half. He said relax. Whereas Jeremy Pruitt's got a new football team. He's got to take the advantage of coaching them. Hour Very 25 interesting. minutes later we're set to play football again. Paxton Brooks to kick. Marcus Sims is back deep for the Mountaineers. Everybody, not everybody back in their seats, but a good portion of the folks at Bank of America Stadium. A yard deep, Marcus Sims will bring it out. And Marcus Sims out across the 30-yard line. Good return to open up the third quarter. Let's take a look at our halftime trends that occurred a long time ago. <laughs> well, we talked about the quarterbacks every which way you can. Here's the stats from 9 for 15. Again, I think that could be over 200 yards if he'd have been a little more accurate. Jared Garitana came off, got pasted early, 9 for 13. He's winning this Vol Nation over with every series. And you can see it, one big drive. That's all this West Virginia defense has given up. Opening drive of third quarters always seems to be important. If you can sustain something, let's see if West Virginia can. First down from the 32. Blitz coming. Screen out of the flat. Pet away. Didn't get away. Nice job hanging with it. First hit was Nigel Warrior, and then he got help on the tackle from Daniel Batuli. Well, the most experienced player, kind of the quarterback of the secondary, is Nigel Warrior. He's kind of his Minka Fitzpatrick for Jeremy Pruitt, the guy who called the singles for Alabama a year ago for him. 
and he read that one perfectly. His dad, Dale Carter, was a all SEC performer at Tennessee and a number one draft choice in the NFL. There's a swing pass out to Petaway. Kyle Phillips brought him down. It'll bring up third down. Great hustle from Kyle Phillips that time. Quick pass to the left. Quick pass to the right. Really the same play both directions. And that time, Phillips, who we've watched so many games with over the years, struggled with injuries. And uh, that's about as good and healthy. Of course, it's the start of the season. Great play. Tennessee gets a stop here. They're going to be elated to open the third quarter. They've got a third down and seven. All the Tennessee fans on this side of the stadium are standing, anticipating the stop. Greer motions to his receiver on the left side, looks that way, throws that way. Hot man, first down, and more. Marcus Sims into the secondary. Well, you can see, I think, what Jake Spavitol told Will Greer. By calling these quick throws, he started out left, started out right, and he got him with the ball in his hand and out of his hand. He was holding it too much, trying to make too many things happen. He's trying to get his quarterback hot. Rick Neuheisel talked about it. What he did with Garantano, Tyson Helton did, is basically what Spavitol, offensive coordinator, is doing now with his quarterback. Got it all the way to the 33-yard line. Play action. Nice blitz pick up. Long ball. Sills. Touchdown. Remember early in the, in the game, Sills beat Trayvon Flowers, number 25, and it was an overthrow. This time, quarter blitz. Trayvon Flowers has got him. Instead of going with the hitch, Sills runs right by him. A lot of times when you get the corner cat, the wide receiver will just hook up. Look at this. West Virginia's going to go for two. Going for two. Of course, it would make him a 14-point game. That's why they're chasing these extra two points, 21 to 7. Remember, Oh, he's going to burn a timeout on it. Lots those two Left points so badly. Offense, five yard penalty. Still on the track. No, wait a second. They're not going to go field goal now, are they? Oh, they took Next, a delay a game. Yeah, they took it wasn't a, delay a timeout. Game. My fault. Point. My fault. Delay a game. That's a good way to do it. If you're going to kick the extra point, no big deal. Kirk kicking it from that spot. So that means Evan Staley, who's got a couple of field goals today, has a. 25-yard extra point. Talking about the importance of the opening series of the third quarter. I think the Mountaineers just answered the call. Now remember, the safety here is a true freshman, okay? Watch the corner blitz to the outside. The freshman thinks the receiver is going to run a little hitch route. Sill said no. Nope. I'm going for it. I get a flat-footed safety on the play, and this time Greer does not miss the easy throw. Hooks up with his main target from a year ago. David Sills, who had 18 of those last season. Will Greer, two touchdown passes in West Virginia, strikes early in the third. It's been over an hour and a half since the Volunteers took an offensive snap. They're about to receive the kickoff from West Virginia. It only took the Mountaineers four snaps in this third quarter to go 68 yards, and Will Greer with a second touchdown pass. And David Sills has made it 20 to 7. You know, that's really the equivalent of about three Super Bowl halftimes in the <laughs> NFL. And they always talk about how the guys might get, you know, lose all their juice <laughs> at halftime. Let's see what uh, Tennessee does because last time they were out there, it was 10 7. Now it's 27. Nigel Warrior from the two yard line. And broke a tackle at the 18 and lost yardage. He's going the wrong way. Gets buried under. A wave of Mountaineers at about the 16-yard line. A rocket mortgage by Quicken Loans brings you today's scholar athletes. Our West Virginia, Ezekiel Rose, 
And for Tennessee, Kyle Phillips. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans is showing their commitment to the investment of our future by donating $1,000 to West Virginia and Tennessee's General Scholarship Fund. Jamie? Well, I had a great little moment with Kyle Phillips this week. I was catching up with him on the phone in anticipation of this game, and in mid-conversation, someone came in and handed him his transcript, and I tried to get bait him to tell me a couple of his grades. He wouldn't. However, he did finish up his degree in sport management. He wants to go into athletic administration, follow his mother, who is an athletic director at Tennessee State University, but it was pretty cool. I, I figure there's a couple of A's on that transcript, but definitely better than mine was. Well, yeah, but you used to steal yours out of the mailbox and sign it for your dad. Oh. That Great, score thanks. Last night. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Dad. By the way, I did that. I think you guys just. I think you just found out for the first time. Okay. Sorry, Jenny, I mean, Jamie. Just learned this. There's nothing ever off the record. Oh, so. great. <laughs> I'm glad I learned it right now. Second down at two. Gartano out. Almost taking a knee with Cedric Tillman to make that catch. I don't think he did though, but he's buried anyway. Josh Norwood. And Drayvon Askew Henry were there. Kind of split the box blockers that time, Josh Norwood did. It was one of those quick screens to the outside that we've seen, you know, 200 times in the last couple of years. And if you don't get that wide receiver block, it's going to be an ugly play. Now last, now last three openers yeah. for Tennessee. They've come back to win, including a double overtime against Georgia Tech last year in Atlanta. They're down here by 13. 50% of their third down conversions today, and they blow this one dead. Yep, it's going to go back five more yards. False start. Number 73. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. And that's their best offensive lineman. He had an ankle issue in the first half. Trey got retaped back out there, but it makes it third and ten. Remember that this is where you start thinking about that long layoff. You know, you miss a block on a wide receiver screen, you jump off sides. It's been, remember, over 90 minutes since they've been on the field before. You lose that flow. Third down and 10. Tim Jordan's going to flare out of the backfield. Garantano down the middle. Hit his receiver, but he's hit immediately and it's incomplete. Nice play by Toya Savory. Sure was. He anticipated that square in that time. It would not have been for a first down anyway, but he saw it coming all the way. It was man to man outside with what they call a rat receiver in the middle. The DPs forced their receiver into the middle and the rat standing there to pick <laughs> off the cheese. <laughs> and it forces a putting situation for Joe Doyle. Marcus Sims has to call fair catch again. Hunter for Tennessee's done a pretty nice job today, preventing any returns from a guy that's pretty dangerous in that capacity. 20 to 7. Mountaineers, they've got the ball when we come back. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Control GX. Napa. AT&T and by New York Life. Back in Charlotte, our aero coverage sponsored by State Farm here to help life go right as you're looking at our Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, where West Virginia leads Tennessee 20 to 7, and they've got good field position to start their second drive of the third quarter at their own 40 yard line. Well, they also got a quarterback that's in the groove now. Good coaching by Spavato to get him back and accurate. And by the way, been watching this game a while. No one has covered David Sills yet. Number 13. He's in a slot to the right on the top of your screen and now in motion towards his quarterback. Penaway on the ground. Nice job defensively by Alexis Johnson. Well, when you're talking about the Greer family, number seven even comes into Uncle Eddie's interior store. They got it right in the G there. All-American player of the year in high school, a preseason first team All-American. There's Uncle Eddie working the books, <laughs> working the books over. So number seven, his dad wore it at East Carolina. His brothers wore it. He wore it. He's still wearing it. He'll wear it next year in the NFL. Draw play, pet away, and breaks away. Across midfield, and he's still dragging volunteers with him. Toughest run of the day by far. 
Martel Petaway. The second big play against the Tennessee dime defense. With the run, spread them wide out. Remember they hit it in the red zone before earlier in the game. They come back with the same call and they gash them again. Against the dime defense, they've been able to get two big runs in this football game. 22 yards for Petaway that time all the way to the 40-yard line. Martell, kind of the main guy today in the backfield for the Mountaineers. They fake it to him. Greer going to load it. Going deep. Man's out there. Got him. Touchdown, Marcus Sims. I don't know. He didn't get it, I don't think. I think he dropped it, didn't he? Just like that guy's hat, I guess he did. <laughs> It was a beautifully designed play. We were talking about Sills and the safety bit on Sills. Now it looked like he had the ball. This is really looks like the second drop touchdown oh, of the game. And it came out. Beautifully designed. Great throw. You got to make that catch. He had it for a while, but he did not come down with it and secure it. Balin Buchanan kind of stayed with it and his hip popped it out of there, I think. Right there. Yes, Buchanan. you're right. It was a kind of inadvertent hit. Now the swing pass out in the flat to Sinkfield. Sinkfield follows his blockers and he's close to a first down. You're right. You can't call that a drop. He would have secured this ball if not the hip hits it and bounces it out. See, if this was the NFL now, we'd have 30 more minutes trying to figure out what this is a catch or not. <laughs> right. We'd be we'd be talking to New York. We've already had enough delays. Yes, exactly. Yeah. We've... So it's third down and one. Came up just short on that little swing pass to Sinkfield. Petaway back in there in the backfield. They've got a fullback in Logan Timmons in there. See if they follow him to the right side. Yep. First down. This Tennessee defense badly needs to stop. Remember the game started out West Virginia up 10 nothing. Then they got the two stops against West Virginia, allowed their offense to get into sync a little bit. Right now they need to help their offense. They're stale on offense. West Virginia can feel it. Will Greer is finally throwing the ball and not thinking about scrambling so much. And on target, they need to stop badly. At the 28-yard line of first down. See if they take a shot here. Greer takes the shot. Out of bounds, though, incomplete intended for Sills. Flowers was covering. Yeah, that was uh, two guys that have confidence in each other. Okay. I mean, you're going to go your senior receiver against a freshman. My guy's six foot four. I'll take my chances and uh, just a little too wide. There's back shoulder throws, and then there's three yards out of bounds. Yeah, exactly. No one can get that one. You look behind Greer and Sinkfield with a second down and 10 for the Mountaineers, the Volunteers, 28 yard line. Greer takes another shot. And this time he's got it. Gary Jennings touchdown. Oh, man. This one wasn't three yards out of bounds. That was perfect. Yep. Nigel Warrior was the defender, but you can't defend this. It's a perfect throw to the slot. He's there, but there's no one that can stop that throw. Gary Jennings, who caught 97 balls for almost 1,100 yards last year. But only one touchdown. Today, he's got a touchdown on that one. Extra point is good, and the Mountaineers have come storming out here in the first half of the first quarter. Two more touchdown throws from number seven. And so far, eating at halftime beats coaching at halftime. <laughs> Another look, Jennings on a perfect ball from the preseason first team All-American Will Greer. Mountaineers rolling here in the third. That'll be fun. Fun third quarter if you're a Mountaineer fan. Yes. Will Greer's come to life. Three touchdown passes now on a right. 
14 of 22 day for 251 so far. And and in keeping up with the Heisman, I think some people have already sent their votes in already. <laughs> That's how they do it now. In I, I wait until the last. Yes. Day. I think you should. How about till the season ends? They'll bring it out to the 25. A couple more looks at Will Greer's third touchdown pass of the day. They don't come much prettier than that, and the catch wasn't too shabby either by Gary Jennings. And we'll give you one more shot. I want to see what this one looks like from the goal line and a look from our Chick fil A pylon cam coming up after the celebration. Sills and Jennings, and Greer comes over to join the group. First down at the 25 for Tennessee. They need an answer. Huh? Maybe they've got something working right here. Tim Jordan all the way into Mountaineer territory. Best run of the day by Jordan. Right up the gut, avoids that umpire again, gets around the corner. Not a breakaway back, but an effective running back and huge positive yards. Right now, if you're calling plays, you might be thinking four down territory already. Jordan's got 91 yards on the ground. Now they go to Madre London, and London should have a first down at the 35. He's very close to it anyway. Okay, Brandon Kennedy is getting his football legs. Okay, remember the first half we talked about hadn't played a lot, and he was getting manhandled at the nose by Bigelow. Now he's doing the manhandling. Had to zero that circle in there right on. <laughs> it was off at first. He'd like to get like another half a yard right here if they run it. Jordan back in there. Play fake. Garantano fires in the flat complete. Jawan Jennings, first down. Still battling over there on the sideline. Yep, he's that emotional leader. He could be. He's got to earn that spot. He walked it all. He left the team. Almost was going to be gone from the team forever. He got back, getting another chance, but that's that type of fire he can show. Well, he was booted off the team by Brady Hoke, who was the interim coach at the end of last year, but then reinstated by Jeremy Pruitt. He's just frustrated after missing all those games with a wrist injury last year, but it's good to see him back out there and healthy. Garantano again, play fake down the middle, ball up in the air, incomplete, oh, intended for Palmer. He's going to call interference on that play? There is a flag down at the 11. Yeah, he, I, he must have hooked him with his right arm as he reached out with his left arm. Pass interference, defense, number three. Five foul, automatic Ooh. first down. And it wasn't number three, it was number four. And, and I think it was Josh a pretty Norwood. good play, though. Well, you can't see from behind. Remember, from behind, the official is looking at that trailing right arm. And he must have hooked Josh Palmer on the play. And that's why he got called. Oh, there see you go. that arm right yep. there? That's why he got called. Good he call. gave that official the opportunity to make the call, and he got called. You got to have confidence when you go across you got to keep that back arm free costly penalty moves it to the 11 yard line first down I backfield this time for Tennessee Tim Jordan the second man through Jordan to the five down close to the four David Long made the stop and we've got a Mountaineer down. He got the pile landed on him at the end. Drayvon Askew Henry, yeah. one of the captains of the defense, senior out of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. He's the spur, basically, kind of a hybrid linebacker safety, coming back from an ACL that he tore in 2016. So last year he played about eight games. Up and hopefully okay. I did not see exactly what happened. Right side, there he is. Let's watch him. Watch him. I think the pile falls on him. At, no, he got his own guy kind of hit him in the back and his ribs from behind. Probably knocked the wind out of him. Yep. So he's out for at least a play, and he'd love to be in there right now because it's second down and goal at the four. Yeah, and if I'm calling plays, I'm calling plays like I got four opportunities. Down 20, you would think. Yep. Second and three at the four yard line. Tennessee can get a first down at the one. 
Tim Jordan cuts it outside. He'll walk in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Jameer Johnson, number 58, comes around and gets the seal block on the play. Watch him come, pull, and get the block right there. That's the play that makes the play. Come around, wall him in, and ends up getting two players on the play. What a block by Johnson. Pylon Cam presented by Chick-fil-A shows an untouched Tim Jordan going over 100 yards with that carry and an all-important Tennessee touchdown. Extra point is good. Yeah, so that play, that drive, finished with Tim Jordan and started with Tim Jordan. Remember that opening run to start the drive. Tim's got twice as many yards in this game as he had last year. Volunteers hanging in with the Mountaineers. Week in Columbia. Well, there he, Georgia's better be a good team because they're going to run into a hornet's nest there. Yes, they are. Well, a two-minute drive. I don't know if Tennessee had their two-minute drill in, but they went 75 yards in five plays to get back in this football game on that last march. So with 6.09 to go here in the third, volunteers to kick. And the line drive fielded at about the two by Marcus Sims. Going to try to take it back the other way. And he'll get across the 20, but that's about it. Tennessee, well, they had a tumultuous offseason with a coaching search, as here's kind of how the candidate thing went. Dan Mullen, who went to Florida instead. Greg Schiano was going to come from Ohio State. There was an <laughs> uprising from the fans. Mike Gundy said, yeah, I think I'll stay in Stillwater. Jeff Brom stayed at Purdue. Dave Dorn at NC State. Mike Leach offered the job from what we heard. And then draw a line under Leach for you. Oh. Then, the, then the athletic director went out, and Philip Palmer came in, and Jeremy Pruitt got the circle as the head coach the 26th head coach in Tennessee football history. This is Lady Brown the freshman. Maybe three as I said before when he's in there he's going to carry the ball because he's not up to date on all of the blitz coverages. You know I'm trying to think back another coach that nobody thought was supposed to be a head coach and ended up being and doing a great job. I come up with Lloyd Carr. And remember Gary yep. Bowler leaves. Right. Nobody thought Lloyd Carr was going to do that job. He ends up winning enough games and ended up winning a national championship. Jeremy Pruitt, you know. Who knows? That's what the Vols are hoping. The Vols fans have been hungry for a while. Second down and seven. Possible blitz coming off the corner here for Tennessee. They're bringing it. And Greer's throwing the other way. What a catch. But that's like handing off a baton to a guy 35 yards downfield. <laughs> Same play hit for a touchdown. In the slot, going to do the half wheel on the play. Look at this throw. He turns around. You can't. I, I, I don't know. You don't know what to say. Now, that's a Kirk Warner type throw. I'll tell you one thing, though. Jennings didn't give up no, his I, eyes I, I until know. the very end. But, but would you? I mean, that's no. like. Yes. Defensive back never looked back because he never even looked like he was going to go for the ball. See, this is how uh, Will Greer has to play. He needs to play from the pocket and stop trying to be all this running that he has to do. Just relax, throw the ball, be more Kurt Warner, you know, than... Uh, and take that six-yard play yes, right there. take the one in front of him. You don't need to be Russell Wilson. Just take the throws in the offense. Picked up six to Sills. They've worked it to the 39 yard line of Tennessee. On the ground. Brown first down run. Letty Brown the true freshman. When we met with Dana Holgerson. We quizzed him, you know, you're an offensive guy. Did you turn this thing completely over to Jake Spavato? He said, completely. We rebuilt a little bit of the terminology in the offseason. He basically said, so I could understand it better. <laughs> so we're all on the same page, but he said, no. I gave him complete control of the offense. There's Brown again, another good run. Spavato, who's been with some good quarterbacks along the way. 
makes that case Keenum at Houston Brandon Weed Oklahoma State Geno Smith Johnny Manziel if you could coach Johnny Manziel I guess yep. Davis uh, Webb who is still playing in the league behind Eli Manning and now uh, we saw him that day when he put 42 points up against number one Alabama in that game in 2013. Second down four as we approach three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Greer blitz coming throws complete first down and that's Giovanni Haskins the tight end. This is something they haven't had a lot of right. good tight ends. Now they got three or four. If Will Grill will learn to be patient with his pass offense and not try to make big plays it will be impossible to blitz him. He's got too many options to throw the ball, too many good receivers. He'll just run you out of your blitz attack. He's so quick with that football. His okay. next completion will put him over 300 for sure. Right at the 20. Back to the ground. And Lenny Brown. Five-yard run, a tough one by the kid. Hey, he's been in there for three plays and carried the ball each time. He's out of the same high school as David Sills in Delaware. And Nate Holgerson said to us yesterday, all the good players from Delaware come to Morgantown. <laughs> I don't know why that is. But no, the problem is there's only like three of them. <laughs> yeah, but they're all in Morgantown. Exactly. <laughs> I'd pick a bigger state, you know, if I was going to be. <laughs> At the 15, second and five. They're going to keep it on the ground. Only two yards that time. It'll bring up third down and three. Interesting. Uh, the guys were talking about at halftime and before the game that West Virginia is a pure air raid, run and shoot, multiply the plays. They're not anymore. The goal last year and previous years was to get 85 plays. Now they said they want to tone it down. The new goal is 75 plays a game. We talked about. Hogerson working with the Hal Mummies and the Mike Leaches yeah. and all that. He said, I got kicked out of that air raid club about five years ago. They don't like talking to me. Anymore. I run the ball too much, yes. is what he said. Kennedy McCoy in the lineup for the first time, I think, today in the backfield. Greer throws it to him in the flat for the touchdown. One play, one touchdown. Hello, Kennedy. Well, I think he knew he had this touchdown before he snapped the ball. He didn't even have to make a tough throw. You got the two tight ends going out here in the little wheel route. You see Tennessee chase the tight ends, and he knew he had it before he snapped it. They're going to do the same thing again. They're going to line up for two. If they like it, they're going to go with it. Otherwise, they'll take the delay and kick the extra point. Let's see if they like it. They'll turn around and look. It's up to Spath. Now McCoy ships. The Greer's right. They like it, I guess. Two-point conversion incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Trevon Wesco. But they've got another score, 33 to 14. Will Greer is starting to put up those kind of numbers, isn't he? 310 yards, four touchdowns. Preseason All-American looking all of that. And his coach says, add up, baby. Right here, guys. Wow. Keep us posted on that one. 11 years to the day, like Adam said. I remember that like it was yesterday. It's 11 too. years ago. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> now here in Charlotte, Did another 78-yard drive in nine plays, just under five minutes for Will Greer to find Kennedy McCoy out in the flat for just a walk-in touchdown, his fourth touchdown pass of the day. Didn't it seem more shocking then, though? I mean, now it doesn't yeah. seem as shocking. I don't know why. There's, just so, there's so many of these, you know, teams knock off these guys in these games. For a catch, you got one. Bring it out to the 25. It was he in the end zone? Doesn't matter. Doesn't He'll be matter. placed at the 25-yard line. Yep. 115 remaining third quarter. Coming up Tuesdays. Okay. Oop, there's the replay. You see the fair catch. Coming up on Tuesdays this fall from Dick Wolf, executive producer of Law and Order. 
comes a new series FBI premieres Tuesday September 25th on CBS. So Tennessee let's see if they have another answer they did the last time they had the ball and it was this guy that got him the touchdown Tim Jordan and he's bounced in cartwheels across the first down marker very close to it looked like he got to the 35. He, he, he kind of reminds you of the way John Kelly ran the ball last year for Tennessee you know I, and he was not, a good one. Yeah not a huge breakaway threat guy but tough keeps good balance. I didn't see the final cuts but John Kelly who was a six round pick of the Rams had a great preseason. I, I think he made the team. Behind I, would Todd Gurley. I would assume he would. Yeah. And here's Jordan again. Picked up about four more David Long is still down after making the tackle. The junior captain out of Cincinnati. As Gary said he was their defensive player of the year last year but had some injury problems. He missed the first four games. Oh, his head right on the yes, knee. Yes he did. That it could be a significant concussion type injury. That's where you really got to be careful. Made the hit and then grabbed both sides of his helmet and still on his back now. Started to get up and that's where it stopped right there. They only lost Charlie Benton, their outside linebacker, earlier and has not returned. Last year when he did come back from an injury he had a game against Oklahoma State where he had 18 tackles so he's a guy that's always around the ball he's walking off and trying to pump himself up a little bit not taking any assistance to get to the sideline. Well I'll tell you Tennessee fans are going to say we've struggled through two years of injuries the last two years according to Phil Steele no team has lost more starts to injury than Tennessee 52 in 2016 and 58 and fi last year huh? yeah, yeah gosh that's a lot that's too many Jeremy Banks a freshman in the backfield play fake by Garantano has got his man Marquez Callaway quick throw out of bounds first down you know what happens a lot uh, I, I remember it clearly it's been a while but I still remember it clearly you go after the game and you look at the play calls and you go you know we went three for three on that out to the left side. Why did why, we do it more. Yeah, why yeah. did we stop and that's been a good start over there. I think Helton circled it and said why am I not calling this again. This is going to be the last play of the third quarter at midfield and now it'll become the first play of the fourth quarter on the other side. They only have to move two yards. It's going to be at about the forty nine in the other direction. That's the end of three. Thirty three fourteen. Led by Will Greer, Mountaineers with the lead. We'll return to Charlotte right after this message and a word from your local station. Wow, what a game. Here, a 20 point third quarter, Zick, for the Mountaineers of West Virginia. They lead 33 to 14 in front of. What started off is almost 67,000 people here in Charlotte. So first play of the fourth quarter with the volunteers at their own 49 yard line. Jared Garantano three receivers and an eye backfield behind him. Tim Jordan's been the workhorse today trying to bounce it outside and he's going to lose a yard. He's had over 100 yards rushing today but lost yardage there and now a very important third down as we welcome you back Brad Nessler Gary Danielson Jamie's on the sideline Tennessee needs to score on this drive they do and I think right now they got to think that they're going to go for two if they do it if they don't make it they're down 13 right now you're thinking clock is going we got to score we got to have a two point play every time we score third down is so important and here it is a long one though third down at 13. All three receivers to the right for Garantano wants to throw a screen back the other way and he overthrew the intended receiver. Tim Jordan kind of was in the mixture. Could have been a big play. You know he could have caught West Virginia in a blitz 
You block the remaining guy that has the back. It could have been huge. But just a little bit too high of a pass, and the pass blew up the play. It could have gone the whole way. Very good call on third and long. He anticipated the blitz, and he almost gashed him with it. Had Eli Wolf, the tight end out there, getting ready to throw a good block, which might have sprung him, but yep. instead it's a punt. Joe Doyle. Man, He's that one good. a mile high. Yes, he has. Fair caught inside the 10 yard line by Marcus Sims. So West Virginia's a long ways away, but they have the luxury of a 33-14 lead. They'll be on offense when we come back. That's time for Exxon Mobile game recap. Our matchup between West Virginia and Tennessee. Garrett Garantano had to hang in there early. They were taking his helmet off almost with his head in it, but he stuck in there, came back, found his tight end. 13 out of 18, 109. We had a weather delay. It took about an hour and a half. There's a little bolt of lightning, so everybody headed to the tunnels. And then out came Will Greer. That capped a drive. David Sills, a 68-yard drive in four plays. Then it was Greer, Gary Jennings, perfect pass. 60-yard drive in seven plays. And then wide open, Kendo McCoy. I think that's the only play he's been in, little swing pass. And the real McCoy has the fourth <laughs> touchdown pass one of the day one. by Will Greer. Yep. And remember, he threw one to Sills through triple coverage and hit Sills right between the one and the three in the first half, or he'd have five of them right Should. now. Now the challenge for West Virginia is, can you move the ball without throwing the ball? You know, because you'd like to take some clock off with this thing right now. And, you know, so far they run the ball, but only when Tennessee has been expecting the pass. Well, you know, you bring up that and we look at our time of possession and everything. The first half they had the ball under nine minutes. In the third quarter they had it almost ten. So that's a big difference. Yep. And like you said, they'd like to chew clock right now. McCoy's back in there behind Greer, who's going to throw. Maybe. Got away from the rush. Now he's got to go down. Right about at the line of scrimmage. Will puts the headgear back on. He's going to have to come out for a play, and we're going to see Jack Allison. Yep. I assume. In 2016, Will Greer was the scout quarterback, transfer from Florida. Last year, transfer from Miami, Jack Allison was the scout quarterback. Now, will West Virginia take a timeout to get your guy back in the game? Maybe. Jack's going, uh, uh, Coach, I got it all strapped up here. <laughs> I'm ready to go. 6'6", six, six sophomore, a transfer from Miami, and he's just smiling. I don't think he's, uh, I don't think he's coming in. Well, I, I think it's worth burning a timeout here, don't you think? I do, too, when you got a guy yeah. that's this hot right now. And the score and everything like right. that. Little coaching strategy there. It's the one way you can get around the one right. play situation. So far, food and timeouts in the favor of Holgerson. <laughs> You're big on that food thing at halftime, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> All West time, Virginia takes the time. time Halftime and <laughs> We'll see number seven back when we come back. Sunshine now, of course, here in Charlotte. 33-14 as we check in with Jamie Urell. Well, Brad, West Virginia fans knew they had a special quarterback coming into this season, but a Heisman campaign would not have been approved by Dana Holgerson unless he knew that Will Greer could handle it. The website is Greer7Heisman.com, and it is impressive. I told Will, I feel like we're best friends after I got through this whole thing. It's, it's so in-depth. They're going after the will to do different things, will to win, prepare, compete, will to love. I asked him. He's got a lot on his plate. He's a dad. He's a husband. I said, is it ever too much? And he gave a pretty thoughtful answer. He said, it's a lot, but every morning I wake up and I know I'm doing things for people that best deserve them, whether it's his family or the university. And we are seeing that Heisman campaign start in this first week. You saw his wife, Jeannie, go through there, his little girl, Eloise. And we talked to Dana Holgerson and said, you know, are you worried that he can't handle this? He goes, are you kidding me? He acts twice as old as I do. <laughs> and he said, I'm not kidding. And well, you can probably get that if you know Coach Holgerson. This is the stop that Tennessee needs to make it a ball game right here. If they have any chance of getting back into it. they got to get a stop and get the ball back in good position. Third down and 11. Greer from his own goal line. Down the middle, and he got it right on target to Jennings again. First down, West Virginia. Well, they blitzed. They brought the middle linebacker, dropped the outside linebacker. Balin Buchanan, number 28, had the coverage, picked up the blitz beautifully. 
Gets a defender in his face, but he still delivers the ball on target. Again, Buchanan just a little bit out of sync, and they make him pay with a first down. They're going to at least eat out another two and a half minutes off the clock. And another 22 yard pickup out to the 31. Right now, Bill Greer chewing up yards. This was last year with the hairdo. Jamie, I know you talked to him about this. He just wanted to clean it up for the Heisman campaign or what? Yeah, it sounds like that was the case. Also, he was a little worried because his daughter actually loved the long hair, and she still recognized him after the haircut, but he said, if I ever got rid of the beard, I'd be a little worried for yeah. my almost two-year-old daughter. So I, he'll definitely be keeping the facial hair. I kind of dug the long hair. You know, it looked like Charlie Whitehurst a little that bit. That haircut will always be known as the Heisman cut if he wins <laughs> it. Second down at two. Straight ahead, going to be close to a first down for Kennedy McCoy. Gary mentioned it earlier. It's not just an air raid attack. They have run the ball very well under Dana Holgerson. Last year they had another thousand yard back in Justin Crawford. So, you know, year in and year out, they have guys that are in that thousand yard category. And that's why Martel Pettiway's gotten so much work today. McCoy now getting work here in the fourth quarter. We talked about Sinkfield and Brown, the freshman that they like. They got the fullback in there now. That's a first down run by Kennedy McCoy with authority. I'll tell you, if you're a West Virginia fan and you're dreaming about, you know, getting through this preseason slate, three and zero. Oh, Getting into the Big 12 and taking a run at the Big 12 championship, watching this drive right here, being able to put a game away when you have the lead could be nothing but good sign for this West Virginia team. This is how you keep it away from the Kyler Murrays and guys like that when you're playing Oklahoma or you're playing TCU or Texas, whatever the case might be. Let's take a look at the schedule. Gary brought it up. Yeah, you know, it starts out with those first three. That's going to be a tough football game with Ryan Finney and Finley over there with a the quarterback at NC State. Yep. But it ends up nicely at the end, getting Oklahoma at home, and possibly they could have to play them back-to-back -back weeks, I guess. But, you know, if you're going to make a run for it, winning this game, if you do, against an SEC team, and then catching NC State, and then having NC State have a decent year would be good enough for their resume. Out of the ten and a half minute, Mark Greer comes up fired again, complete to his tight end Wesco, and it's another first down at the forty. You know, we just talked about uh, this quarterback situation with Greer. What a great time for that area in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. You know, Namath, Montana, Marino. Back in 1982, it was Dan Marino, Todd Blackledge, and Jeff Hostetler playing quarterback <laughs> for Pitt, Penn State, and West Virginia. Not bad this year. Trace McSorley, Will Greer, and an emerging good player at Pitt in Kenny Pickett. They've got three good ones on those three teams. I like that. Man, ball's out. Here it is. Can you get the ball back? Tennessee says they have it. And we might have a Mountaineer down of hurt, too. It is Tennessee ball. At the ball. Kennedy McCoy has been with, running so well. Covers it with two hands and still gets it dislodged on the play. Was it Theo Jackson that got the I ball dislodged? So. That is the first turnover of the game with right at 10 minutes remaining. And it gives Tennessee new life. Hang around. To avoid the upset, guys. All right, Zuck, thanks. Wow, big win for Auburn. They had a little trouble with Mercedes-Benz the last couple yeah, of trips. Sure. Yep. Don't forget later in the game, and if the uh, play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts, Bet Tennessee's got the ball back after the Paul Bain fumble recovery. Bet you if App State scores, they go for two. There's that play to the left Mark side again. Callaway. And he's into West Virginia territory down to the 43. They must have had five of those in this game, and uh, they've been just as easy each time. Now they got to go hurry up. Remember, they got to have a two point play ready. 
They got to get the six point play first. <laughs> Good point. They got 20 on that one though, down to the 43. Jared Garantano down the middle. Great strike again. What a throw. Yes, great anticipation. He threw that before the receiver actually crossed past the linebacker. He let it go. He anticipated the throw. You can't do it any better than that. Brandon Johnson got it all the way down to the 21. It's going to be tough to get Garantano out of this spot at quarterback for Tennessee. I agree with you. Off play action. Throws back the other way, completes it to Tim Jordan. And Jordan inside the 20. That was, an, that was a big tackle by Torres Avery that time, number three. Had a blocker coming over from the right side of the screen. If he doesn't make this tackle, could have gone all the way to the end zone. Put his shoulder right on the thigh pad and hung on for help. Jeremy Banks in the ball backfield. Here they come. Here they come on the blitz. And the throw is complete. <laughs> and it's Jeremy Banks. This time Jarrett knew he had no help on this play. Sometimes you just don't have enough guys to block. He knew he didn't. And he had to get rid of the ball and he got rid of it accurately. Just greased it in there. And now they've got it first and goal. So they're moving it down here after the turnover. Under eight and a half to go. That looks like a false start. You know, I got to say, Brad, for both teams, pretty cleanly played false game. Start, yeah. right? Number 73, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Opening game, you know, no preseason games for these teams. A lot of turnover for both teams, really, rebuilding these teams, especially with a new system coming in here for Tennessee. Pretty cleanly played, well-coached teams. First and goal, but now it's back outside the 10 at the 13. Aaron Tano rolling right, has some blocking, throws it complete. Jordan Murphy tiptoes out of bounds. And about the nine yard line, maybe inside the nine. They change up a couple of bodies. They bring Josh Palmer back in. Callaway, Palmer, and Brandon Johnson. They've all had catches on this drive. They're all in there as we're at the eight-minute mark. Second and goal at the eight. Tim Jordan who fights his way down close to the four. I think Tim Jordan and fight should be linked together a lot. <laughs> He's a battler, isn't he? Yes, he is. Sophomore out of Bartow, Florida. He's had a busy day. 20 for 118 and one. Two downs here. Third down and goal. Just outside the four. Garantano fires. Goal line no. Only to the two. I thought on that crossing pattern that Josh Palmer was going to be closer to the goal line, but he's not, and it's fourth and goal. Remember right now, what you have to make a decision if you're Jeremy Pruitt again. If you kick a field goal, it makes it a two possession game 16. But I, I think they're too close here and too far behind. I think you got to go for this one. No brainer. Last time they had fourth and goal, they found the tight end for the touchdown. They need another one here. Garantano, pressure coming. Lofts it, corner, too far for Palmer, incomplete. And Dana Holgerson is pretty excited for his defense. One of the things you have to know as a quarterback, and you have to put in charge of your throw in your mind, when you're rolling out and you're trying to throw a ball going in the same direction, you're in motion, so the ball is in motion. It always go farther than you think it does. Never thought of that. Good call. Tony Gibson says, that's what I'm talking about, fellas. On a fourth down, West Virginia takes over. History not repeating itself like it did at the big house, guys. Thrilling finish, though. Thanks, Zuck. 33-14 here. 6.43 remaining as West Virginia's taken over on downs, holding Tennessee from a first and goal situation without any points. Martel Petaway. Only about a yard stood up by Alexis Johnson. 
Well, we talked about the expectations for West Virginia, but the expectations for Tennessee is a little different. I mean, you know, you start out with this game, tough games. They've got a brutal schedule, especially in the middle of this schedule, all the way down. If they can win two up here and win four down there, <laughs> you could have a successful season. Now, can you steal a game in the middle? That'd be great, right? Yep. Well, yes. anything would be better than four and eight, no and eight. Absolutely. You got to stay healthy. And you got to finish in November for Tennessee. Second down and eight under six minutes to go. Will Greer fires from his own end zone and he's got Sills again. Yeah, he was out of bounds. David Sills all the way out to the 42. I thought he was going to get tackled. That's why I started my commentary there. Yes. You're just excited. I thought he was going to get tackled. That's why. He goes out of bounds here. Let's see if he was pushed out of bounds. That's going to be a judgment call because he did clearly go out of bounds. And he's still running. And right now they have the change set up at 42. And that's where I was still talking right there. <laughs> First down. Here's the throw out in the flat to Sinkfield. And Sinkfield's got it out near midfield. David Sills, a high school quarterback. Here's some of his action from his high school days. Kind of a shot put out there. And here's another one. Wanted to play quarterback at West Virginia. Transferred to junior college to try to continue in that area. Jamie, I know you talked to him about that uh, journey that he had. I did. It really it was that year at junior college where he felt like he almost took the game for granted and the love for it for granted. He had to come back to West Virginia with a different mindset. Dana Holgerson said he had to let that quarterback stuff go to become the wide receiver he is. And he's a good one. And so is this tight end who's going to be a big part of this pretty soon. 275 pound Trevon Wesco. I had laughed when uh, we asked Jake Spavitol, the offensive coordinator, as you look at him staring down this throw. Oh, look at that. Right past the Perfect. linebacker on the play. Perfect. Why did you go to the tight end? And he goes, because I coached some years in the SEC. That's why I went to the tight end. <laughs> and Dana Hargis said, I never had any. So I said, I went out and recruited. I got like four of them now, and they're really good. There's the numbers for Will over 400. So people that haven't seen this game will wake up tomorrow and go, maybe he is a Heisman candidate. Here's a toss. Sims on the end of round. Wanted to stay in bounds, and he did, I think. Yes, he did. Dangerous guys. Marcus Sims, Gary Jennings, yep. David Sills. They've been everything that they were last year and what we expected them to be today. And also Wesco now emerging. Yep. A 275-pound H-back tight end. You know, in high school, he was a quarterback that weighed 215 pounds. And now he's got a big body. They let him meet not only at halftime. That's right, all the time. At the three and a half minute mark. Second down and five in the red zone again for the Mountaineers. Letty Brown short of the first down, but got it to the 15. Two excellent drives. I know they had the turnover to end the one drive, but two times Dana Holgerson's looking at his offense and say, can you take clock off the time off the clock? Remember, in the Big 12, you can't give that ball back to the other team. They're so explosive in the way they throw the ball around. This is how you put games away. Brown stays in there in the backfield to get the carry again. He's stuffed this time. Nice job. Daniel Batuli, he is always around the football. Yeah, I think Batuli's one of those guys who can play anywhere for any team. 90 tackles last year to lead the balls. You know, the nice part about this is it looks like the field are going to go for a field goal on this thing. Give their kicker another shot. Evan Staley started the scoring with a 26 yarder way back in the first quarter. Well, the interesting thing about West Virginia when they go into those four minute offenses they've got a quarterback they can trust with the football. Now, I know throwing a lot of interceptions last year but this year I mean is his blood pressure or heartbeat ever go up at all. It doesn't yeah. look like it at all. Evan Staley from 32 yards wide left. I thought they were off sides. Yeah, maybe they were. Marcola Osborne number three I thought he was offsides coming around the corner. 
I think he even knew he was offsides, to tell you the truth. It's going to be a first down. I was going to say, if he's offsides, it's a first down. See, he knew it. Offsides. Defense. Number three. Five yard penalty results on a first down. It was fourth and two, so they moved the sticks. West Virginia keeps the ball with two minutes and six seconds left. A couple of bad throws in the first half. One great drive by Tennessee. And I think West Virginia showed you why they're a threat, you know, with the receivers and the quarterback. Now, what do you look in Tennessee? If you look on the other side of the field, you see a well-coached team, I think. I yeah. think. You see a team that believes that they're headed in the right direction. And I think you think you got a quarterback, too. A much more confident Jared Garantano than yes. what we saw a year ago. Greer, end zone, Sills, touchdown. Stat throw. Stat throw. Heisman throw. Five touchdown throw. Yes. This is the one for, you know, I got a guy going for the Heisman. West Virginia would like to have a Heisman guy. Sure. Let's give him a chance. It's one on one. There's nobody in the middle of the field. It's safe. Might as well do it. Got a guy that's my main target who's 6'4 and runs that slant and nobody even close. But it also gives a message to everybody else they play in the future is if you try to stack it on us, we're going to throw it. We got a guy we trust and we're going to throw it. 98 yards in eight plays. And Staley gets another chance to kick this time for a points. Well, it started kind of slow, but number seven found his groove, didn't he? 25 of 34, 429, and touchdown number five. Let's take a look at the GMC game changer. Well, Will Greer, when he's got the right read and he knows he's got the right guy, he's got the blitz right there. He knows he's got the touchdown. He's got a safety on his slot. He knew before the snap that he could make this throw and he made it perfect. Next touchdown, he's got two tight ends to one side and he's got two players. He knows he's got the touchdown. Well-designed play and delivered. And then moments ago, one-on-one -on -one to the outside, I got a fifth-year senior quarterback and a six-foot-three receiver. Why not? Career high day, 429 yards passing, a career tying, five touchdowns, and by the way, no interceptions. That always looks good on the resume, too. Nigel Warrior from the four yard line on the kick return. Nigel cuts it outside up the sideline. He's not giving up. All the way to the 49. Just a point here. Interesting. Jeremy Pruitt has decided because of his talent and what he needs to do. He's going to use his starters. Nigel War is an important player of this team on special teams. More power to him. But Tennessee fans have a lot of memories of injuries on special teams. Kurt Majit, Jalen Rees Mabin, Cortez Sapp all got hurt playing special teams. You got to be careful. I know you got to balance it, well, but it is scary. Came from a place where they do that pretty well I know, in Alabama. But, I know, but they've got 85 four and five star players. Right. They got a little more backup. Yes. 152 remaining in this one. West Virginia, the big lead. 152 remaining. Keller Christ is going to come in at quarterback. Good idea. The transfer from right. Stanford. Not only because uh, Keller Christ, uh, you know, is going to challenge for the job this week, but, you know, you get a quarterback hurt, you got to have the other guy ready. Tennessee keeps it on the ground. He's going to pound it out to the 50. Coming up after our game, stay tuned for CBS Sports post game show. Hardest working guys in television, yeah. especially today. <laughs> yes. Adam and Rick and BJ will be along following us. Well, you know, like college football, it always delivers. There have been exciting plays and games sure and finishes. You know, Jeremy Pruvitt's debut as a head coach is not going to be successful, obviously, but. He's only got nine seniors on the team. He said only five of them are going to play. We said, who are your leaders? I think Garrett, Jared Garantano is working his way in there. I think so. But he says, we got a lot of good followers, but we've got more talent than we have confidence. I don't know if they're going to build confidence today, but they hung in pretty good with a pretty good football team. Yep, I thought they did. I mean, uh, no, nope, there's a lot of teams that aren't going to stop Will Greer. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Here's 
Chargers banks down to the 46. Uh, I mean, you know, Tennessee fans don't want to hear that this is a win. It's not a win. I no, get that. I know that. But you got to build the program, and it takes time, and you got to build it in the right direction. I thought one interesting thing that he's been doing to try to get his team to believe more and more that the guys on the other team aren't supermen or anything. He's been showing all Americans that he's coached at Florida State, Georgia, and Alabama tapes of them getting beat badly. And he goes, look, everybody gets beat. The great ones get beat. Get up and do it again. I said to him, did you have a hard time finding any bad ones with Minka Fitzpatrick? <laughs> and he said, as a matter of fact, I showed two of his this, this week yep. at practice. Well, Will Greer has started off his season brilliantly, and we're going to see a lot more of him as the season goes along. He's a good one. And they win their opener. 40 to 14 is the final for the number 17 team in the country. And they move, they're probably going to move up from that spot a little bit this week. I think so. I think so. Right now, it's time for the Napa Play of the Game, presented by Napa Auto Parts. Will Greer, there could have been a whole bunch of his today. But this is as good a throw as you're going to see. David Sills. And now let's hear it from Tony Caridi, the voice of the Mountaineers. Greer holds those hands up in a prayer formation. Slaps them together. Jennings runs through. A fake handoff. Now Greer throwing downfield. Has Sills. Makes the catch. Touchdown. West Virginia down the right sideline. David Sills beat the cornerback for 33 yards down the right side. The true freshman Trayvon Flowers got beat. And West Virginia's Greer on the opening possession of the third quarter finds his old running mate. Good call, Tony. One of seven catches for Sills for 140 yards and two touchdowns. Jamie is with the winning coach. Coach, the world wants to know, what the heck did you feed those guys at halftime that produced that kind of second-half offense? Yeah, that's top secret, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's a good win. The guys came out, you know, they kept their composure. They came out, they played well in the second half. Uh, this is why we do it. It's the greatest tradition in college football right here. we got Country Roads playing. Will Greer threw to nine different receivers in this offense. How did the game open? up for him as it went on oh, just hanging in there you know I mean we had to possess the ball more you know we possessed the ball more in the second half which gave us more opportunities you give him the ball that many times uh, he's gonna make something happen I'm very proud of him very happy for him this is big for him being in his hometown to get this victory and it's great for Mountaineer Nation uh, largest alumni base in uh, in the United States is right here in Charlotte it's a big win for everybody congrats coach all right thank you I don't know if they'll take the country roads or the freeway about six hours back to Morgantown but they're gonna be happy when they get there. That wraps up week one. Don't forget Williams Bryce Stadium next week. It's going to be a beauty between the Gamecocks and the Bulldogs. That wraps it up from Charlotte. For Gary Danielson and Jamie Erdahl, Brad Nestle saying so long from the Queen City. Final score. West Virginia's Mountaineers 40. The Vols of Tennessee 14. College football postgame show coming up next after these messages. So long from Charlotte.